Okay, what do you think is going to happen first? The Leafs score a power play goal without surrendering a shorthanded one, or we get vaccinated. Dude, what? That's the most depressing. I'm sorry, I don't really know him. We're not that tight. Let's go! Why not? The Toronto Maple Leafs! I guess my brand is a yell and scream. Ah, I don't script these. Are the Leafs all right? So what you get is from the heart. Welcome to LFR. Ah, Leafs lose 3-2 in overtime to the Calgary Flames in Big Save Dave's debut. I, th I thought he was pretty good. Let's talk about the game. So, there were actually a number of notes heading into this game. The obvious ones were obvious. Nick Foligno can't play, he's in quarantine. Ben Hutton can't play, Swamela can't play, Nason can't play. William Nylander obviously still on protocol, but curiously of note, Jason Spezza not in the lineup. It looked like he was a healthy scratch. What? And that got people debating, well, Nick Robertson should come out. He's the kid. Uh, Joe Thornton should come out. He's the old guy. Apparently, it's not that serious. From Sportsnet's Luke Fox, when Jason Spezza joined Toronto last season, there was an agreement he'd rest on back-to-backs. Has been difficult to arrange this season until now because the Leafs were so tight to the cap. Oh, okay, well, that's a much better explanation than the Leafs thought Jason Spezza was bad because they don't. That would be bizarre. Imagine Imagine a coach not putting him in the lineup on purpose. IMAGINE! Get over it! I shan't. Never. There's nothing wrong with that at all, especially down the stretch with about a dozen games left. Spezza should get some rest, Thornton should probably get some rest, even guys who have battled injury, maybe even Matthews, Simmons, if they want it, right? Matthews doesn't exactly look like he needs a rest right now, but leave the option open. And what's also good about older or potentially somewhat injured players getting a little bit of rest is it gives an opportunity to other guys. Nick Robertson is one, Scott Sabarin was another making his Toronto Maple Leafs debut. Which made me raise my eyebrow because of note, this is Milan Lucic's 1,000th NHL game. And I saw that and I'm like, oh, those two are fighting. And I was right. The Leafs actually decently involved in Lucic's 1,000th game. I don't know if it's common practice to recognize the 1,000th game or any milestone of a player when they're on the road, but the Leafs did it by playing a video pack for Lucic. And he got up, he waved to the fake crowd. I thought that was pretty cool. Now, people make offhand comments about Lucic. I mean, I mean, the contract's a little ridiculous, sure. But A, he's on pace for his best offensive performance since the 17-18 season in terms of goals and overall performance. Points. And it's extremely hard to play a thousand games in the National Hockey League. I think it's even harder to play the thousand games that Milan Lucic has played in the NHL. 1166 penalty minutes during the regular season, another 196 during the playoffs. And as long as we're including playoffs, he has another 124 Stanley Cup playoff games. He's played 1124 games in the NHL. That's an amazing achievement. Good for Milan Lucic. Now, Scott, if you can go out there and punch him in the face as a sign of appreciation, that would be great. Yeah, I know, hockey's kind of weird. Now, the first goal, less than five minutes in, I have no idea what happened here. So this right here is Michael Backlund. He's about to enter the leave zone, and the defenseman looking at him is Zach Bogosian. Nope, there is 15.35 left in the first. There they are in the corner. There's Bogosian still on Backlund. Seven seconds has passed. The right defenseman is in the left corner, but, I mean, he's been following him the whole time. And Yusuf Alamak, he's like, well, no one's filled in for him, so we. Lucic feeds him, and Valimaki scores. The first goal that Dave Riddick gave up as a member of the Toronto Maple Leafs came at the hands of the Calgary Flames, because of course, uh, it's rare to say this, but like, I think I'm gonna hang that one on Hyman. It seems like he's the guy who should have filled in there. I've been a little ho-hum on Dermot Bogosian recently, but like, they both were on players. Not a great start, and now the Leafs are down one nothing. And already I'm seeing people, oh, they, the Leafs shouldn't be making Big Save Dave play in this game. Making? I'm pretty sure he wanted to, didn't he? This dude flew to Toronto on the Flames plane after getting traded to the Leafs. And I agree with you that it's extremely difficult circumstances. I mean, you just get traded to a new team and you're gonna play right away and it's against your old team. Emotions are high. He was talking post game about being afraid of players in blue. But you're forgetting something. Dave Riddick is a Czech goalie who are the masters of chaotic energy. Dude, Dominic Hasek, Peter Mrazek, big save Dave. It seems like exactly the sort of thing he would love. <laughs> and with the assist, all right, we know Lucic is gonna fight later in the game. It's just a matter of when. He's gonna be looking for a goal for the rest of the night. A Gordie Howe hat trick in your thousandth game would be amazing. So now the Leafs gotta go and get it back. About halfway through the period, we get another look at the Leafs' new look second line, at least for this game. It's Zach Hyman, John Tavares, and Joe Thornton. And John Tavares, to start this play, he was a horse. There was another play where he just snatched someone's soul right out of his boots. And he's got the puck in the offensive zone. Sean Monahan is trying fruitlessly to take the puck off him, but that's John Tavares. He hands it off to Morgan Riley at the point. Riley with the light 
shot on net, probably hoping for a tip. He doesn't get it. But it bounces off the end boards and right onto Zach Hyman's stick, and he's like, don't mind if I do! Zachary! <laughs> on the attackery, and this guy keeps scoring! A few items of note here, with an assist on this one, Morgan Riley gets his 300th point in the NHL, and to think I was mad when the Leafs drafted him. I mean, dude, it was 2012, he was the fifth overall pick, and he played like 17 games. And, it was the Leafs in 2012. I'm sorry that I didn't have faith in them at the time. Turns out it was good. John Tavares, by the way, the little thing king with a secondary assist here, he's now up to a 68 or 69 point pace over a full season. As he heats up, I think he's gonna get even closer to what we expect out of him. And now Zach Hyman, with his 15th goal in 41 games, that's a 30 goal pace over an 82 game season. Last year, he had 21 goals in 51 games, which is about a 33 or 34 goal pace. Hyman obviously had to come off a of surgery to start last season and the season ended early for obvious reasons, but he was on pace to score 30 goals. This season, he's not gonna get there probably because there's just not enough games left, it's a shortened season, but he's on pace to score 30 goals. Is Zach Hyman just kind of a, 30 goal scorer? There are obviously games remaining in this season and he could slow down, but if he doesn't, and if this pace remains, that's the second straight season he's been on a 30 goal pace. And I'm not gonna lie, I keep being wishy-washy about this on the podcast because I liked how he looked on the third line, but like, put that guy in the top six forever. Well, with Tavares or Matthews, yes. Nylander comes back, Felino enters the lineup, whoo! That bottom six does have to figure some things out, but that is a really good top six. Anyway, immediately after this goal, the thing happens. Two warriors standing side by side at the face-off circle. One throws their gloves off, the other throws their gloves off. They put up their fists, they size each other up. Oh, we can't go yet? We can't, why? Oh, you gotta blow the whistle before we punch each other in the face? All right, sorry about that. Here, let's put all our stuff on for no good reason. Now let's stand here awkwardly. All right, they blew the thing, we can go now. That was so dumb! Nope, nope, you have to wait until we blow the, come on! It's a hockey fight between two willing combatants, not the 100 meter dash, just let them go! Anyway, Scott Sabrin and Milan Lucic decide to throw bombs at each other, and that's actually a pretty good fight. Now, plan fights off the face-off. Do they belong in the game? We can have that discussion. I think it's kind of silly and outdated. If it's a heat of the moment thing, whatever, but like two guys calmly being like, Sh should we complete this transaction? I think it's kind of weird. But with this one, I look at it this way. It's Milan Lucic's party. If it's someone's birthday and you ask him what cake they want and they say chocolate, you get him a chocolate cake. And his 1000th NHL game is kind of like his birthday. And for his birthday, he wanted to get punched in the face. It's not what I would have asked for, but everyone likes different things. So Sabrin said, here's your cake. That's a lot of blood. And they both go off for repairs. Well, that was fun. Now we head to the second. And less than 30 seconds into the second, Mitch Marner takes a tripping penalty on Elias Lindholm. Which means the Flames get a power play, which means they're gonna have more players than the Leafs for up to two minutes. Now for the uninitiated, that typically gives you a tactical advantage over your opponent. Pretty much right off the face off, the Flames clean the Leafs out, tic-tac-toe, bomb, Lindholm scores on the power play that he drew. You are allowed to score power play goals! And the Flames are now up 2-1. Boy, I don't hang that on Riddick either because Holy cow, you can't be that easy to beat in the defensive zone. This has been a trend. Not necessarily on the penalty kill, although the Flames had free reign here. It's been a troublesome thing at five on five, losing the face off and then immediately getting scored on. I know Mitch Marner was in the box and he's a key penalty killer, but like as a guy who plays in your top line and plays the most minutes out of your forwards, He's gonna take some calls, man. You, can't, you gotta be able to survive. And so now the Leafs are gonna have to outscore the Flames at five on five because you know on the power play they're getting nothing. And that goal 34 seconds in would prove to be the only marker of the period. So we go to the third. But I gotta say, all second period long for the rest of the second period after the 2-1 goal and in the third, Riddick was good. You get used to watching the same guys all the time and I loved how unfamiliar Riddick was. It was nice getting used to his style. He's a very busy goalie and yet kind of calm. There was one play in particular, I don't remember exactly when it was, but the Flames had a man wide open in the slot with possession of the puck behind the net. And Riddick just sticks out his stick and cuts off the pass. And I was just kind of like, oh! I haven't seen that in a very long time. But unlike some goalies who the Leafs have used, his movements aren't 
wild. He's not flailing himself outside of the blue paint. He's good at redirecting shots uh, to the corner and out wide. Put it this way, he gave his new team every chance to get back in this game. And get back in this game they did. And on this one, Alexander Kerfoot got to eat the meal he prepared. Leafs deep in the flame zone but they lose possession. Lindholm goes to clear it and he's picked off by Kerfoot. Battle along the wall ensues. Hyman wins it, gives it to Tavares right in front for a wide open Alexander Kerfoot. Off the bar and in! Beautiful shot! Chase! I'm not sure how much I love the current configuration of the bottom six, I'm a little worried about it, but if guys in your bottom six can do what Alexander Kerfoot does, which he can, Woo! That's just a really good effort from Kerfoot, which is kind of his hallmark, he hustles every single shift, but the shot! Wow! And like, that's a pass first guy, like if it's a two on one, like guaranteed he's gonna pass. Uh, maybe shoot more there, Alex. And now, the game is tied, but the Flames desperately need these points. They want to stay in the playoff race for as long as they possibly can. The scorpion save from Markstrom on Mitch Marner was absolutely ridiculous. And late in the third, Joe Thornton gets high stick and he's bleeding. <gasps> That's a four minute double minor. And I'm not even, my eye is involuntarily twitching right now. Can you see it? Can you see the left one? And th they do hit the post. It was, I don't remember if it was this power play or another one, but just they suck! And they obviously don't convert. <laughs> I, I actually had some people tweet at me, fire Manny. As in Manny Malhotra, the assistant coach who runs the power play. First of all, dude, he just got here. <laughs> Second of all, they were really good to begin the season. Obviously something is wrong. Is it between the ears? Sheldon Keefe was asked about that and he said 100%. And listen, the Leafs are in a comfortable spot. Uh, everything is going to be fine. They just got to prepare for the playoffs, but... This seems to be priority number one, doesn't it? Getting this power play working, for goodness sake. Maybe the only good thing about it is the Leafs have been unbelievable at 5-on-5. Five five. The fact that they've lost as few games as they have over the last month with their power play like this, it's astonishing. So, with some good goaltending from Markstrom and from Riddick, we head to overtime. And it wasn't very long, was it? Marner and Matthews, super aggressive. I, I thought Matthews most so. So here we are, we're about 30 seconds in. I don't see any problem. The Leafs are three back. Good for you. And Marner and Matthews both go after Gaudreau at the same time. And like, to me, that's clearly Marner's guy. I don't know why Matthews is involved there. I know he's trying to cut off the pass and you gotta find a way to create opportunities. I mean, I, I would trust Austin Matthews' judgment there. But Gaudreau Drew saw the pass before he made it and saw the play. He's gone. Matthews isn't going to catch him with the path that he took. It's a two on one. Really good job by Lindholm to settle a bouncing puck. He gets it to Gaudreau, throws the nasty, nasty hands on Dave Riddick. That, that is mean. That is your friend, Johnny. Why? He scores. Leafs lose. Now look at you, Leafs Nation. I know your fire burns hot. You want this team to win. So do I. This isn't such a bad thing. The Leafs are missing several guys who are going to be in the lineup. Felino for sure, Nylander for sure, Spezza for sure, forgot about that one, and there are probably some others. Not to mention Frederick Anderson, by the way. Riddick is supposedly the third. Third with a pretty big asterisk, I think. The Tampa Bay Lightning won the Stanley Cup last season. One, because they're extraordinarily good. But two, they were extraordinarily good the season before, but they went into the playoffs fat and happy. The Leafs have had like one slump this season and it lasted like what, a week? The Leafs are good. They can always be better. Questions. Steve, I've recently gotten in the habit of saying Zachary on the attackery every time Zach Hyman does something. My mother blames you for this development. Any comments? Good! Also, I threw a poll out there just to ask Leafs Nation what they think. Is it Zachary on the attackery with a K or with an H? Like, you know, Zach. 82% of almost 3,000 of you think it's on the attackery with a K, but now I'm thinking that might be wrong. I think the word should be A-T-T-A-C-K-A-R-Y instead of E-R-Y. Yeah, that makes sense. That may Could I put it on a shirt? I want to put it on a shirt. How's the furnace? Broken? Yeah, it's broken. So, uh, we need a new furnace. That's why I laugh when people are like, secure the bag when I got a sponsor in these videos. I'm an adult. There's no securing the bag when you're an adult. You simply obtain the bag and then hand it over to somebody else for a furnace. How much did it cost? Well, come up with a number. More. But hopefully the furnace adds value to the house because money's fake. What does this mean for Jack? Who's the starter? What's the plan? Ada, I wish I had a good answer for you. The good thing is, I think they're all good answers. So right now the Leafs have a tandem of Jack Campbell and Dave Riddick. 
Both are good goalies. Riddick has struggled this season, and he's got a 904 save percentage, or at least he did heading into this game, and a lot of fans were willing to point that out. Are you saying that he's better than Jake Markstrom? Because Markstrom had a 901. Is that what you're saying? Are you sure? Are, are they both worse than Michael Hutchinson then? Because he's got better numbers. Is that how it works? I, I do have a secret for you, and I'm going to let you in on it. That isn't how it works at all. Frederick Anderson is best when he's 100% healthy, right? They need to get him 100% healthy, or as close to 100% as you possibly can. I'd like to see him evaluated before the end of the season. I'd like to see him get some games... This is the whole reason Riddick's here. Uh, they have three really good goalies, and <laughs> if Michael Hutchinson plays, I mean, geez, how many goalies are you supposed to have? <laughs> is getting Dave Riddick just Dubas covering his butt? Uh, well, maybe, but it's also making the Leafs better, so good on you. Can you refuse a power play? <laughs> here is, honest to goodness, what should happen. Forget the power play, both of them, forget them. Sheldon Keefe should, in the locker room, say, who wants to be on the first power play unit? The first five players to raise their hands are the power play. I don't care if it's three defensemen, it's do it. I think it's between the ears. It was like that for Tavares. He was struggling this season and now he's hot as a pistol. They're gonna score a goal and they're not gonna allow a shorthanded goal before it. And I think everything will get better after that. So that is it for this one. Thank you very much for watching. Click like if you like this video, click subscribe. If you really like to tell your friends the power play, it's supposed to be good for you.